I'm very pleased to introduce you to um, two of our most interesting designers and most experienced in many ways because they've had quite a lot of different experiences. One is um, Edward Cutchley, who, who is now, um, what is your full title at... Oh, um, you don't know, do you? Director of Fabric and Graphic Development. Di uh, at Christian Dior. Dior. Right, and you are Roland Moray of Roland Moray. Exactly. What do you want more? Okay, <laughs> now let's start. This, uh, this is going to be a discussion with them. I'll stop boring you with my talk very soon. I hope that they do their job. Um, let's start by saying the four things you, well, three or four things that you think nobody young who wants to be a designer should do. For example, should they definitely go to a college or should they definitely not go to a college? Not. Not go to the college. Oh, I think definitely do. Right. <laughs> Why? Why? You didn't go to a college. I didn't go to a college. Oh, you did. You I did. did yes. So, what do you think you got? I got... I was at St. Martin's, which is a particular Pretty way of college. learning. Mm -hmm. But what I learned from... What that gave me was the space to be creatively independent. And I think if I hadn't had that, I would have struggled to push myself creatively. Okay. But that's, I mean, we can only speak our, about our own experience. Well, this is what I'm asking you to do, of course. And I, you... I learned through experience, uh, the dean of, the only school I've done was uh, Corberso in Paris for three months. And the dean said, to do fashion, you must be able to go out, to look really at what the world stands for. You have to go clubbing, you have to go to, to buy clothes. And I say, I don't have enough money to pay the, the private school and to go out, I'm going out. <laughs> and that's what I did for 10 years. And I learned from my own experience what I stand for. Yes, and of course the fact is that there are many different ways yes. to success. Yeah, and you've both proved that. But why do you feel that everyone feels that they must educate themselves through people who often, who are teaching, have failed at the job you want to learn about? <laughs> Well, that's, well, that's, I a, think that's a nasty one, <laughs> because I agree true. with you. It's true. I, there are teachers and there are teachers. I have friends who are teachers mm -hmm. who have had successful careers, but are passionate about being teachers. There are teachers who have had less successful careers, who are perhaps less passionate about being Do you call your friend but, more tutors than teachers? Tu yeah, well, tutors, teachers... Uh, I think it depends on their approach. Yeah. But ultimately, I think for me, education is the most important thing. And I think that's one of the ben one of the great things about what we're doing here today through the incentives that Woolmark have set up is providing people with information that they can access on their own terms, which I find the most the best way to learn. And I always want to learn because I don't think education the education does not stop at university. It starts no. after university, in fact. Or even, as you would say, without university. Yes. yes. Yeah. So when you're looking at trends, mm. how much does your formal education, and if we can call yours your education through life, yeah. help you to know what's the right thing for the moment? But before you answer that, how many of you, uh, how often do you people consult magazines, fashion magazines? Or is that by the time they come out, that's behind you and you're not interested? It's Except not, to see whether you're in it, of course. Yes, the, I, I think magazine is, you. Well, I, I look at them when I'm in, and it's rare now to be in a magazine, that's me, I don't look at them anymore. And I don't have the need of a magazine anymore, I think. Uh, that period of photographic direction uh, has moved on to other platforms and I will, I will be more on social media to, to mm -hmm. really take the pulse of what is challenging me. Magazines are not challenging anymore and I think magazines are crying at the moment because they're going to the dead of paper and I really think it's not the dead of paper, it's a dead of the way they should be educated the customer what fashion is about. Right. How important then there are buyers 
and stores and um, stockists in that they're the ones who tell you really mm. that you're going right. And if they don't get it right, no, mm. all right. Well, they're the ones who are buying what you're presenting. Yeah, they're putting their faith and their money and I think into their belief always in you. A, it's always that sort of relationship where you're relying on each other. And it's sometimes the friction of what you're presenting them and they're not buying and asking them why and saying, okay, what do you need? This would be my solution for your needs. That's the way that, for me, that relationship works and that I find quite exciting. Okay. What about you? I think my, my relationship with buyers and, uh, and, and has changed the moment I opened my own store because the moment you, you really show a, m a more physical approach of your world, out, not just the product, you have a better relationship with the buyers. Buyers are, are, are not where they were in the past. There, is more, there are more buyers on, on, on the, on the, in the business. And most of them just work with uh, a piece of paper, which are the last sell through of the season before, and they just buy the same thing. That's mean they have a less intuition on fashion, and mm. and they have they have a big responsibility to not fuck it up. That's mean they have, a, uh, yeah, they, they've been asked to make profit, to make profit mm. to the company they work for. Sure. And that uh, uh, sometimes you need to have your own brick and mortar or your you own e-commerce platform to really still express who you are yes. and make you less frustrated to just work with buyers. Right. Do you find, Edward, that being in a big organization like Dior protects you in any way or is the pressure even greater? I mean, I think my consultancy work and my own label become very separated right. in that sense because mm. I've worked for large companies, but I have, when I'm there, I'm very much within the company. I'm not front facing in any no, way and no, don't particularly no. want to be. So when I then go into my own business, there's very little links between the two in terms of buyers, press, mm -hmm. people that I'm meeting. So I think in ways it has helped, but in ways I've had to really do it for myself as well. If something which you think is the most marvelous thing you've ever done, and it doesn't get taken up, for example, your marvelous moment that began your career, you've had others since of course, but your was the galaxy dress. Now, if that had not Absolutely. sold, if it, oh, what yeah. would you No, but, but it's, it's even weirder than that. It's the, <laughs> the name of that dress, how the name came in, you know, everything was never controlled. It was part of the process, like you said, mm. part of the process of what we do. But we still come to fashion because of the magical moment of fashion. I think every, every young person who's going to want to be a fashion designer is because he's got a story of fashion that trapped him in that world and he want to dream that, 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 that dream. And we unconsciously create amazing dream moments who are not made by the fashion world. We, we are so lucky to have that, that collection that is going to touch people and, and going to represent a, a step in our career because we will have defined what fashion is supposed to do is to bring freedom to bring to bring a, a, a new point of view never believe that what you what is right is going to stay right it will become wrong because a new right will appear and, and that's quite fantastic when a young designer make a new right mm, mm. for the world yeah this is probably a silly question i'm sure you can answer it in two words but Am I how did no. you <laughs> 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 did you, did you, was Galaxy a flash just like that or how did, did someone give you the name or? No, how, one thing happened, one thing, one thing, Galaxy was based on that season I decided it would be about London Road, Street and Road, we took the, we took the A to Z, dress with well, the letter G and that one, and we arrived to the Galaxy Street or Road, and that dress is the Galaxy Street. And that's right. how it happened. It, it's just out of the blue. And it become 
stars in the galaxy and of course, all yeah, of them. Yeah. the yes. amazing yes. when journalists are really Absolutely. really amazing and write the best headlines <laughs> what about this is a very difficult question to answer certainly to answer quickly is deep down in your heart and your mind what do you think inspiration actually is creative inspiration mm. I think it's something that's born out of frustration in that it's the thing that drives you to create something new because you're not happy with, with what there. is there. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's breathing. I have all the time the impression in, in my work that me and my team, because I think inspiration and, and can we call creativity too? Is, is, is creativity and inspiration the same thing for you or not? Yes. It's, it's, it's a way of breed, and, and I think we've been in, in the last 20 years different kind of run, diff, like from speed to slow running, and it's to a way of, of breeding to, to be creative and to be inspired. You, for a long time, you try to define what is my purpose, and the moment you start to create and to be inspired, you don't ask yourself that question anymore. When you start looking for inspiration, do you start sketching? Do you look at fabric? Or do you look at clothes that you really are excited about, your own clothes? Even from some seasons to think, yeah, you know, that was an idea that had more potential and maybe I should develop it a little. I mean, I look at refer I reference, so I'll go, I will start on the internet I'll then move to books and I'll just find anything that I find beautiful and exciting. And what is that? It could be anything. anything. So you go to a website about um, architecture? Or? I'll start on Pinterest and right. I'll, see, I'll have something in mind. Like at the moment, I'm looking at a lot of traditional dresses from the Philippines and that'll lead me off in different directions. Right. And then I'll find something interesting, but then I'll take it away from the internet and find a book about it because I think books are the most underused I agree. thing today because yes. when you have a physical object in front of you that you can reference from it's so much more exciting than a digital if you're a good cook I can, I, can I answer that question but yes please because good I course. didn't because I don't have the same thing I no, would, no. Uh, oh thank you Colin <laughs> you forget me. I'm the oldest one here. The town is the young one. You love young people. Well, it's because I'm facing you. You should leap in. I will. I will. Uh, I think I will. Uh, I will be attracted with what disturbs me. I will look out at the world and what is the thing that I I can give a yes or no answer. And that will be my my creative attraction. I will walk in the street and I will look out at someone and say. Why does it disturb me? Why am I not, my brain can process that situation or that, that moment? And that would be a starting point. Uh, I have a different approach. Uh, and I think that's because I've never been to a school. I have an approach of delivering a service. And the best service for me is the one I, I, I don't control from the beginning. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing research or not doing research, how do you actually start? Do you do, start doing sketches or do you start um, getting people to create a toile, a toile for you? I start now, I'm, I'm so lucky to have a strong library because my technique is the, I create, a, because I've not been to school, I had to create a technique and it's folding. I take a square and I fold it around a, a, a shape. And that that's my technique, that's been, from the first collection to the, the one I'm preparing for next next season, it's the same technique. That's me. I can go back to my library. I've got 20 years of career and pull out starting points of of fall that I want to revisit. I want to push back. I want to to uh, reinstall in in uh, uh, in the life of of women. Plus the fact that I can analyze the last 10 years where we so mass produce fashion how much of this clothes been really in the life of someone, mm. you know, because sometimes you produce 20 dress and that's the concept of haute couture, is 20 dress around the world 
is nothing. Mm. That's mm. Mean, mm. You can bring him back because the last 10 years, six collection a year is like dog life. You, you, we have aging really rapidly as designer. We have produced so much and, and but the presence of a library now, a personal library of my own clothes can be the starting point. And the rest is just like every day you wake up, you look out the news, you look out the press and say, wow, that woman, what she's done, you know, example of the two lesbians who are beaten in, 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 the, in the bus and post themselves to say, no, we're not going to become victim. That's a powerful image. Mm. Could be, honestly, could be an image of certain French fashion editors mm. in their French fashion magazine mm. as uh, for a makeup or for a, uh, a jury, but that's a real moment of two women beaten in, in and, and you can't not be inspired by that, by these two women. You cannot be inspired by the strength of people who don't want to be victims. So let's think a little bit about the whole business of sustainability. We talk a lot about it and fashion does get uh, a certain amount of criticism from it. On the sustainability side, it, it, I, th I think the the question are, are really complex now because there is no right and wrong. Every 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 solution are right and wrong, and and I really think for the one who are watching us, you're going to be the real answer of this question. We're just starting the process. We, a person like me with 20 years of career, has completed to deconstruct the last 20 years to start the future, but. I really believe the young designer of the future will start straight away on sustainability. There is no future brand who think they're not going to be sustainable. It's impossible. That would be the, the worst way to believe that you can have a career. And, and it's, it's really a, an ongoing, an ongoing uh, uh, questioning at the moment, but it's, it won't stop. That's, it's not a trend. That's the only moment we say, that's not a trend. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And how, how, how do you go for it with the fabrics? Well, in terms of sustainability through fabrics, I think it's thinking a lot about the fibers that you use. I work with a lot of Merino. Um, and the reason that I work with it, apart from its adaptability, is that it's one of the best ways to contribute to a circular economy. Because okay naturally biodegradable, you can process it in so many ways that use less water, use less dye stuffs. And I think it's also thinking about what fibers you need and how you can source them in a way that is more sustainable. Are you looking at Inca certification, viscose or dots, cottons or there are, there are lots of Categories. routes that you can take already. And I think, as you were saying, it's, it is the future. I mean, it's the but present. But you, you, you find that there is, there is already enough on the table for a young designer to, to start without questioning. I think you to can, find a you solution. Should always question. There are lots of solutions out yeah. there and you can get them easily, but you should always question those solutions. Because as you said, there isn't a perfect solution mm. yet. I don't think there, there will ever be a perfect solution, mm. but I think there are better solutions. And let's see if you're going to make me regret not do, going to school. Did you learn sustainability at school? When I left school, I didn't know the difference between a woven and a knit. Oh, that's why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Go to school. <laughs> Three years of your life, what are you going to enjoy? <laughs> But no, we didn't. But I'm sure that, that I know I hope that there are that should be the future that are of teaching of, sustainability yeah, yeah. now. Yes. What do you feel about the way some designers get huge publicity? They have exhibitions in art galleries. You've had an exhibition in art gallery, haven't you? I have a, a book. But it's yeah, and you have a book. book. Very beautiful. I've never done an exhibition. I think you should be dead when you have an exhibition. Do you? Yeah. Well, I think you're not alone now. I think a lot Maybe of people feel that. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't leave it too long, because no. I'd like to come uh, to You it. would like to come to it, yes. <laughs> what do you feel, Edward? Do you think that um, it's important to leave a legacy, or are you just thinking, well, I'm doing a job, 
I'm enjoying it. I'm making a bit of money. I mean, and as long I'm as satisfying. I'm, if I'm enjoying my bosses. what I'm doing and feel like I'm creating something that's beautiful, I don't care what comes up. So out. fame is not the spur. No. And no. You could say, I wouldn't say that success is not. No, that's a different a feeling. Thing. How would you? Is. How would you? I know what I would. How I would differentiate them. How would you two? I think. I think for me, a legacy is is important. I think a legacy is a link to the, the past and the future. And if, if you know your legacy, you have to know it, you, you know what you live there, it's, it's the best thing I think in fashion or in my, in my industry I can live because I will live something that came from my father, for the butcher apron and it become mm. a technique that every mm. school now I, I is using. My clothes are so much copied in, in his own technique, not in, in the clothes where they are, but the way to take a fold and to make a dot with it. It's something that came from nowhere, from my weakness, by the fact I never been to school. I, I made a dress because I didn't know how to make a, a trouser. I didn't know how to make a, 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 sleeve, a sleeve on the trouser. I didn't know how to put a zip on, on, on a trouser. I made a dress because it was a piece of fabric around the body. And from that moment, 20 years after it became a technique used in school, I can disappear. I left something there. Mm. I, think you, I think you will love that. In you work in certain fabric you will create. Oh. If you do something, you say, it allowed you to back off you, the person, and say, I left something that Maybe. is better than me. But I, never, I never really know whether a legacy is something that you create or other people create. For you, you create a legacy, you create a legacy, but fame is created by other people, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, what do you want your legacy to be, Edward? I would hope that if I leave anything, it's that I made things that made clothes that people felt more beautiful when they wore them. That Good. had a positive yeah. impact on their lives. Mm -hmm. in some way. What about you? Ron? I think what I would like to succeed is the, f the fact that someone, uh, I was someone who love, who love people for what they are, who love, who was allowed to create because people, I could bring something to, to complete their, their, their weakness. Their, their, because I really think uh, from who I am, I'm someone who love as much muscle than fat, you know, I can touch the, I can touch your body without judging it. And I, I think it's one of the reproach of fashion. We're refusing so many part of it because if you're not that kind of body shape, you're not part of it. And, and I love, I love bodies for their weakness. I love body for their lives, their transformation. And is it easy to age? No, it's not. But can you be inspired by it? Oh, yes. Well, I think with those two very thoughtful and thought-provoking answers, that this is a very good place for me to say thank you both for being was a so literate, so intelligent, and so cooperative with the questions. Thank you.